welcome back to another video. I'm surprised I still know how to do this. I've been away for two weeks and it's been really good, uh, but I basically did not make anything at all for those two weeks and it was very, very good for my mental health and physical health as well. But I am back and today's video, because it's the end of the month, is a monthly book roundup. However, I did not do a lot of reading this month because I think I was in a reading slump. I am absolutely certain that I was in a reading slump. Uh, this happens to me a lot after readathons. Like I will read 20 books in a month and then the next month I'm like, <laughs> so that's what happened. Uh, I do wanna make this video also a little bit of like a catch up. I wanna tell you what I've been up to kind of thing and stuff. That bit will be at the end. Let's start with the books. First, I read uh, Catching Fire. You will see it's very reflective and beautiful. Is this Catching Fire? Yes, yeah, Catching Fire, sorry. Uh, this was book number two in the Hunger Games series. Uh, I annotated it, as you can see. I enjoyed this a lot. I just enjoyed it so much. It's just so good. Stuff's happening and it's kind of political and it's dystopian and it's just like it's just so good if you haven't read the series and you're into kind of like dystopian fantasy but like also ya but also like kind of i don't want to say gory because it's not gory per se but it is like brutal so if you like action packed stuff books where a lot of stuff happens this is for you. I don't want to say too much like of what happens in this book because obviously it's a sequel. We have our main character who is Katniss Evergreen, Ever Everdeen, Everdeen, Evergreen. Um, the books are set in this kind of dystopian world where uh, a country which is called Pan Am, where basically all of the country is separated into 12 districts and then there is a capital. Each district is famous for one thing. So the country was formed after there was a rebellion and this government was formed and basically they created the Hunger Games so to remind people like not to rebel again. So what are the Hunger Games? The Hunger Games are basically this yearly event where every single district has to send in two kids, one girl and one boy from each district has to go into an arena and basically fight to the death and only the last one person standing wins. And yeah, it's really cool. I really enjoy the series. I am annotating it as you can see. I'm basically only tabbing and underlining. I haven't written notes and stuff because I haven't felt like it. I've been enjoying the process of annotating. It helps me kind of pay more attention to the book and to the story and to the details and it just is a fun thing to do whilst you're reading. I also read An Absolutely Remarkable Thing by Hank Green and this turns out is going to be a series which I don't know how people were surprised about that because the ending, like, of course there's gonna be a book after this one. And I'm excited to hopefully read that one. This is the Foggy Book, the Foggy Book Club, book club read of September slash August, uh, which I still haven't set the date for, like for the live stream, but um, it'll be soon, I guess, like, anyway. So this is about these sculpture things that show up and basically we follow this girl, uh, April May, which I find is a hilarious name. I don't know why. Uh, maybe it's like a common name in the States, but like it just sounds like two months of the, of the year, like, and they're uh, it just April, May, just, I don't know why that's funny to me, but it's funny to me. I liked the fact that this is kind of YA, but I also, but it's not really, it's like a 23 year old. So she has no idea what she's doing with her life. And I really can relate to that. Not adult, but also not YA, like somewhere in between. There is a name for that genre. I cannot recall that right now, but that's what this genre is. She finds one of these sculptures and then she makes a video about it with her friend and they become really famous on YouTube and their life just kind of takes off and then we find out that these sculptures are actually something that are not, they're not art, they're not sculptures, they're something else. And we kind of go into all that. It was one of those reads where like at the beginning and up until like probably halfway through, I was kind of like, okay, well where are we going with this? I wasn't uninterested, but I wasn't sure 
how good or how I was going to feel about the book. Like I was interested enough that I wanted to keep reading and also obviously because it's a for the book club, I always finish those books even if I'm not enjoying them. But I was kind of like, I want to know what happens next, but also I'm like, I don't understand where this is going. Like I didn't, I just felt a bit like, is this going to be a love story? Is this going to be like, our main character, April May, isn't like the most lovable character ever. She makes a lot of mistakes. And I found that the fact that she's super honest about that and that she's always like, I'm not perfect. This is what I was thinking when I did this. I know that's not right, but that's just what I was thinking. And I feel like that's really refreshing because most of the time you have characters that are either really like self-conscious and they're like, think that they're always making mistakes even if they're not. And then they find out that they're, they're actually really powerful or really great and they should just be more confident or whatever. Or we have characters that are super confident and that think they know everything and that are like super ballsy and stuff. And we don't have like, I don't feel like we see characters like this very often where who are flawed and who are really upfront about their flaws and who don't pretend that they don't have flaws and are like, yeah, this is me. And yeah, I make mistakes and this book is about my mistakes. So I kind of found that refreshing and nice, but I didn't love it at the beginning because at the beginning I was kind of like, okay, mm. And I didn't understand why that was so relevant and like why we had to keep going back to that. Obviously things would be a lot different if April hadn't done things the way that she did. And I think it's important for the author to underline that her mistakes or her actions, whether we agree with them or not, were why the story happened the way it happened. And I found that refreshing and I liked that. I didn't love her all the time. A lot of the time I was like, why are you such an idiot? But the fact that she was also like, yeah, I know I'm an idiot and I know I shouldn't have done that was kind of like validating and it made me like not her, not hate her so much because I was like, okay, so she does know she's being an idiot. But I feel like that really sets the tone for the book because you're not, this isn't a lovable character. You're not supposed to agree with everything she does. You're not supposed to just go along and be like, oh my God, I love her. This is supposed to make you think about things, about the way that you dis make decisions, about the way that the world works, about how we interact as a species with each other and how like the world would react to something that affects us all equally. That was just really interesting and I really liked that a lot of things did happen. So I like more action-based books, but I also really like books that make you think about things, you know, that make you reflect and that make you think about like, how power works or how the brain works or how human society works. And when I finished it, I was like, hmm, okay. It's one of those books that the more I think about it and the more I think about what happened and the way it happened and the way it was written, the more I am liking it. And the more I'm like, yeah, that's a really, that really makes you think kind of thing. That's it. That's it for the books. So if that's all you're interested in, you can now leave and I will see you in my next video. Bye. However, if you are interested in having a little catch up with me, then you can stick around and find out what I've been up to. Yeah, I don't know what that was. I was away for two weeks. Um, I kind of decided to do like a full on vacation of like no Twitter, no Facebook, no Instagram, no YouTube, nothing. Um, I didn't have videos prepared to go up. I like just thought, you know what? I need time off. I need to not be thinking about comments and things that are people are telling me and stuff. Not because it's stressful in its in itself. It's just because I have had a really rough summer. I've had a lot of flares and they just like really take a lot out of you. And I genuinely just needed a time out from life like real life kind of thing so i basically didn't do anything i went on vacation to the beach just like swam a lot i didn't look at my phone very much that's all i did it was lovely absolutely amazing i also went to my gi this week last week and we had our little checkup we do normally every three months but we're gonna be doing it a little bit closer now because stuff's happening so i've been having a lot of like symptoms and my ibs has been flaring a lot. That probably has been 100% related to changing my medication, to you know everything that comes from that and to all of the flares that I was having. It's normal that my gut is just gonna be like out of balance. Um, not that it was ever like really balanced before, but we were just managing the symptoms a little bit better and now it's just like, eh. We decided to not do anything. My doctor felt that we've been 
I've been doing enough changes as it is so more changes is just going to like make my gut worse and not better so we need to like let things stabilize and get balanced and just get my body used to new medication and then we will figure out what to do and if things go back to normal if whatever normal is for me or you know if we continue to have symptoms then we'll figure it out but she just wanted to like do nothing and just wait a little bit longer to see what we can do but until then she did give me some more tips and more things like ways to help my treatments and to just make things run a bit smoother so just to help like with my discomfort and to just help my symptoms along we're doing all the same things we're just trying to like be a bit more dramatic in how we use them and, and we're just trying to give like my gut a little like helping hand uh, more than i already usually do she obviously was like you can't get anxious about this stuff because it makes it worse and i was like yeah but when these symptoms start happening I'm just like panicking in my mind and I know that it's probably the medication changes and it's probably all of these flares and I know that it's probably nothing but also I'm like what if I'm dying and she just starts laughing she's like you're not dying you're fine we talked about my anxiety a little bit and we talked about my depression and just how like it's totally a hundred percent from fibro like it's just symptoms it's not me feeling depressed about anything because I told her like I can never actually like pinpoint what I'm sad about I just feel sad and she was like yep that's that's it that's exactly what your illness is so but going back in November to make sure we're doing the right things and to like just check on everything talk again about what how I'm feeling and stuff I'm also going in October to my neurologist to do our little checkup to see how my headaches are doing and to check on my new medication and then I think my GI wants me to go back after that to like know what my neurologist said and to kind of like do a new I don't know just figure it out yeah like that's my little update but yeah I've not been watching anime I've not been doing anything like that I have been sewing a lot so I have been working on a prototype for a cane strap that I'm hopefully going to sell eventually. I want to make them really cool and really easy to put on and off because I find that cane straps are sometimes really hard to take off and on and I don't have time for that. And sometimes if you have like a really plain one, you might want to have a fun strap that you can switch out. And that's my idea, but I'm still working on the prototype. I feel like I've made something that I'm happy with, but I still feel like it could be better. So I'm still gonna keep tweaking it, trying to improve it. I will talk more about that in my walking stick upcycle video. But for now, that is everything that I have for you. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please don't forget to leave it a like and a comment and consider subscribing to my channel if you have not done that already. I will leave links below for you to see, check out my Etsy store and the Foggy Book Club and all of that stuff. That is everything I have to say. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.